<laughs> so our driver just picked us up and we drove about 20 meters and then he got out of the car. So. <laughs> Hey and welcome back. Today we're going to be exploring the boutique and beautiful Dalat. So strap yourselves in as I show you the best things to do in this cute little town. G'day and good morning guys from another day in Vietnam. Today we're in Dalat, which is actually north of Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon as the locals refer to it. Jay and I got a bus, a uh, sleeper VIP bus, which was about $30 each, and it took about six hours to get here. The bus was really, really nice. We actually went during the day so we could see all the views of Vietnam. Um, it was really comfortable. I got about two hours sleep in. I think Jay got about four hours, which was really nice. Let's get this day started. Just stumbled across this cute little alley and um, check this out. This is where you can get all your cool Instagram photos. That's sick. Looks a little bit like Brazil. Brazil vibe with the stairs and the short alleyways, but this city is um, always surprising me. It's really awesome. So as you can see, there's a real European vibe in the buildings around here. It's, um, it's really interesting, like everywhere you look there's that Asia mix, but there's the European design flashed into it, like you got, you got the Asian power lines obviously, but then you've got the European design, so it's a really cool little town, it's something that you don't see every day or stumble across, so thumbs up to you Dalat. I um I love it. Another thing as well is that Dalat's actually quite cold. So I'm wearing a long sleeve. This is the first time I've worn it in two and a half months. It's a nice change actually. Our our room didn't even have aircon. I pretty much slept like a baby because there was a massive thick doona and I haven't had a thick doona like that for two and a half months. I've just been sweating my ass off and turning on the AC and having like a thin sheet in most hotel rooms so it's a really really refreshing change. Now what we're actually doing is Jay's ordered a uh, taxi grab and we're going to go to our first uh, tourist destination so we couldn't actually we couldn't actually find any open um, tourist centres probably because of COVID and how quiet it is at the moment. So we've just decided to make our own way there and take a taxi. So our driver just picked us up and we drove about 20 meters and then he got out of the car. So <laughs> we're hoping he comes back. I think he may have just went to the bank or something, but he didn't say anything when he got out of the car. So let's see what happens. you what it is so refreshing to be in greenery once again which means pollution was still there it was okay it wasn't as bad as Bangkok but it was still there so coming here to Dalat um, is way more refreshing <music> So we're just lining up now to buy our ticket for the uh, toboggan roller coaster. So essentially it's just like um, it's like a roller coaster and you go down the mountain but you break yourself so you can get really really fast speeds. So each ticket for an adult is $10, $10 Australian so we're looking at $7 US. So really good prices and then at the bottom there's a waterfall which we'll check out as well. So there's a line of, of about 50 people. So not too bad. I mean, we should get through it pretty quick. To get on the coaster, 
and I've been told to put my mask on, which is the first time that's happened in Vietnam. But we've met these two little guys here. What are your names? Kevin Chan Jr. And? I'm Cindy. Oh yeah, so these guys were just telling me how to use the coaster and they've just subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is awesome too. So yeah, let's jump on these. So these are the brakes here. Oh, whoa. I think these people in front of us braked way too early and um, they've clogged up the ride. So we're going up a steep hill now. So I think what they did is there's a brake just back there as you saw and they do it to separate the people because some people go really slow and you get too close to them and the safety mechanism kicks in and you can't go as fast so this is a good way halfway through the ride to separate us so then we can go really fast again. That was good fun. That was good fun. I want to do that again. That was cool. That was really, really cool. This is a much bigger, bigger waterfall than what I expected. I just love waterfalls. I love the concept of how all different parts of the water from the rainforest flows into one big stream and creates something magical like this. It's so cool to see. Like imagine being the first people to, to discover like a certain waterfall and being able to put it on the map. Imagine falling in that. Oh, no thank you. So there's people actually abseiling off the side of the waterfall. Oh my gosh, like, that is crazy. I'm all, I'm all up for adrenaline rush, but to do something like this and abseil down waterfall. Wow, that's, um, they've got some, they're very, very brave to do that, let me tell you. No way I could do that. It's so nice to just sit here in nature and just chill. Breathe in the fresh air. You can smell the fresh pine. I love the smell of pine. Comment below if you like the smell of pine. I, I don't know if it's just me, but I love it. All the pine needles and everything everywhere. So beautiful, so peaceful. Not too hot, not too cold. What more could you ask for? In Vietnam, man. It's moments like this. Yeah. See, we got here when we did. We just got up to the top and, and look at this line. So we were just in here, but now the line goes all the way, all the way back there. So at least a 200, 250 person wait. We got lucky. Yeah, we got really, really lucky. It came in a good time. It's only, what, half an hour difference? Man. So I'm just looking around and everyone here is dressed up as if as if they're going out to dinner or something like that. <laughs> I'm just dressed in like my adventure clothes. I think Traveler's in, outfit. Yeah, in my, in my traveler's outfit. I think in the West, like, um, yeah, we dress up to just go on an adventure. But here they, they make a day out of it for all their Instagram and everything. So they dress up as if they're going out for dinner and take all their Instagram photos at the waterfall and everything. So just to, it just goes to show the difference in culture, you know. So as you can see, there's a lot of tour buses. And what does that mean? Well, the zip lining is actually full. So that's okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to the... Cable cars. Cable car. K2. 
cable cart. Yeah. We're going to go to the cable cart, which is equally as better, except we're in a safe environment. Yes. Because Jay wasn't too sure if he wanted to do, to do the zip line because he's afraid of heights. Don't get me wrong, I would have been shitting myself too. There's a few cars nearby, so I think, I think we're good. So we're just ordering a car now. It's 54,000 dong, which, so for every 17,000 dong, that's roughly one Australian dollar. So we're looking at $2.70 Australian for the ride. So what's that, like $1.50 US, something like that. So really cheap to go the cable carts. And then, yeah, then after that, we'll be going to another surprise, which I'll show you guys in a second. Radio, so we've just arrived at the cable carts and check out this view behind me. So you can see what I'm talking about when I talk about the European architecture. It's so cute, this city. So you can obviously see that Dalat's sort of in a hole, I guess. Maybe the right word's like a crater because crater. Cause you can see how it sort of slopes in and the main part of the city is in the in the center of the of the crater. But we're going to walk up now and see how much the cable cut is. We looked on this app called Kluk, which is actually an app that can get you really good deals all around Asia for tourist attractions. So on Kluk it said it was five dollars fifty. So we're gonna see how much it is here and um, pay the cheapest price. So let's go. So we just bought our tickets, so Kluke was actually more expensive, so let's do this. So I'm not too sure how long this cable cut is, but from what I can see, it goes pretty far. You can see all the vegetable fields here, so it looks to be... Yeah, okay, I actually have no idea what vegetables there are, but maybe, um... Yeah, I'm not even gonna guess, I have no idea. <laughs> some Asian vegetable of some sort, Asian I'm guessing. Vegetable. <laughs> actually, to be honest, I might take a guess at what vegetable, probably potatoes, because potatoes actually grow quite well in the cold. Um, unlike the tropics, everything sort of grows there, so I'd imagine maybe big, um, potatoes and yeah, that's all I'm going to guess for the moment. If you know what goes grows well in the cold, write it in the comments and please educate me because I need to brush up on that. actually a strawberry um, strawberry farm and I know that for a fact because I used to grow strawberries back in Australia I had a few little patches so there you go all right so we've just walked into the crazy house and first impressions obviously it is pretty crazy so check out this stairwell so this looks like just a fun little um, exhibit I guess you could say oh cool there's like a little bridge in between all the houses so there's more than actually one house. Wow, this little bridge here. That's cool. Ooh. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, try not to slip. Dude, can you film me? Yeah. There's no safety harness in Vietnam, so this is your safety harness. Oh. kind of magical right it sort of seems like a like a fairy garden or or something of that nature or like sort of I feel like I'm in a medieval land you know like exploring with fairy tale creatures and stuff something that you'd see on like Shrek or something like that Seeing that there's actual hotel rooms here so you can actually stay here um, for 600 dong per night just over 30 dollars australian so you're looking at about 35 yeah 35 dollars australian so 25 us not a bad price for something unique like this oh so this is like a like an underground um 
like this, like a seafood, uh, not a seafood, a seafood. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, what am I trying to say, Jack? Uh, underwater. Like yeah, this is like an underwater land, right? So you can see all of the fish, shells. Wow, this is really cool. Cool, so there's just a whole heap of little bridges made out of wood, and then you've got this big sort of monster building here. Really, really cool. Can't fault this place. Just a bit of fun. Definitely recommend it if you're coming to Dalat. I was just thinking, right, you could imagine being a kid and going through here with your wild imagination. It'd be something so fun that you'd remember. Like, you know, when you, when you look, think back of those memories when you're a kid, like the real amazing, important ones of when you went to a theme park or something like that. This is one of those memories when you're a kid. So if you have children and you come to Dalat, definitely bring them here. It's really awesome. So we're just walking around and it gets more and more interesting as you go. We're up really, really high now. The people who design these places are so clever. Wow, so look at this, we got now a view of the city. This is a spectacular location too. Oh, and you can see here this cute little pink house. So it's so 60,000 dong to enter, which is about $3.50 Australian. So you're looking at about $2.50 US, which is a really good price once again. So that ends today's video guys if you've watched up to this point thank you so much i hope that you've enjoyed to see what dalat is like it's a very different part of vietnam so once again thank you so much and as always keep it real cheers